Welcome to Circuit Analysis, I'm Jesse, and today we're going to be talking about laying out PCB boards. So this video is going to go over uh, navigation, placing parts, editing text, board outlines, placing the origin, board constraints, routing traces, copper pores and shapes, saving and loading groups so you can reuse parts of your layout, refreshing footprints and pads if you've made any updates, changing the application mode, and some troubleshooting tips and tricks. Everything's timestamped, so feel free to jump around. And also, this video builds off of two previous videos, one that's on creating custom footprints and one that's on customizing the PCB environment. So check out the links in the description if you haven't seen those yet. So here we are in Capture with the project that we left off from the footprint tutorial. We're going to get rid of this guy here, and I think... We'll pretty much just do something simple here with a couple resistors around this op amp and um, do a couple connectors and that'll be our PC board. So this is a custom library I made in the past. I've got this banana plug. Let's just do that for the power. And then we'll do a couple of inputs just with this test point here. It's just like a hole that you can solder a wire in. Yeah, we'll put uh, one for the output. And we're just going to use resistors from this analog library. These ones don't have any um, footprints, but we'll add onto them. We'll just throw a little negative feedback here. So we can save that. And let's check out these resistors. And they've actually got a footprint here, AXRC05. So I don't know what that is, but let's just use it. We're going to go up here to Launch Design Sync. Since we already created the board in the last tutorial, it doesn't ask us to create the board again. Um, if we hadn't already done this, it would just ask us where we wanted to save this board file and what we wanted to call it. So now we can do Sync. So here we are, we made it to the PCB editor, but we've already got some issues. So it's saying here that it couldn't find the banana symbol. So that was a custom one I made. We'll have to look into that, and I probably need to copy the file manually to the project directory. So the first thing is how to navigate around here. And to do that, you can scroll to zoom, and then you hold down the scroll wheel and you can move around but it moves kind of the opposite way so if i move the mouse down it goes up it's a little weird you can also use the uh, arrow keys on the keyboard to move around but for the most part i just uh scroll out and then move my pointer to a different spot because it it uh, zooms in and out wherever your pointer is so i just zoom out and then get where i want to zoom in and then that kind of a thing. So we have this part that's already been placed from the last tutorial. Uh, to place parts though we go place and then component manually. And then these guys here we can click on each one to place it. So the bananas are not showing up. There's an error because it can't find it. Uh, we can click on the resistor here and you can see we can place that by clicking. Uh, there is Another thing, you can select all of these, except uh, the banana. So we'd have to start down here. And you can do hide, and then you can place the parts like this. If you press escape without uh, finishing, everything will disappear. There's also sort of a soft link between the program's capture and the PCB editor uh, that works sometimes. So. If you get to here and you just click hide right away, then you can bring up capture and you can click on a part and then it'll let you place that part. And bring up capture again, click on R1, see, and then we can place R1. And sometimes uh, when you select parts in here, it'll also show them if you look at the capture editor. And sometimes that link gets kind of broken. You have to restart everything. Anyway, to fix the banana error, I've copied these three files into my 
project uh, symbols folder. So I've got the banana, DRA, PSM, and then I have the pad for the banana. Now when we go to place components manually and just check everything and hide it and we can place all of the parts. So now that we're done placing everything, we have to right click and select done, which is also shortcut F6 or spacebar in the updated shortcuts. So to move these parts, there's a few different ways. One is to just click and hold down the mouse button and move them and then let go. It's probably the easiest. The other way is to click on it and right click and then click move. And then you get in this move mode and you can click somewhere else. And then the other way is with the shortcut uh, that we put in in the previous video, which is just M for move. So you can just click on anything and click M and then click again to place it. You can also type in coordinates to move things. And to do that, you click it and enter the move mode. So we'll hit M, so we're in the move mode. And then you can just start typing and it'll go in this command prompt over here. Oop. <laughs> like if we say X space 100 space Y space 100. Enter. Well, that was too close to the edge. So if you say x space 1000, y space 1000, there. Now it moved off, but it's really far away because here we're at like 16,000 and 11,000 mils. So if we do control Z to get that back, uh, hit M again to enter move mode, you can also do an increment. So to move it in the X direction, if it's right here, you can do I X space 100, enter. And that just moved it 100. In the X direction, you can do I Y as well for increment in the Y direction. So now I'm trying to do stuff here. I can move these, but if I click M, it's not working right now. Um, that's because I'm stuck writing in this uh, command prompt over here. So that's one thing to check. If it's not responding, maybe you're typing something. And uh, you can hit Enter. And now that went away. So I can click here and hit M. And now I'm back to moving around. So there's little things like that you got to be careful of. Um, there's also these modes up here to keep an eye on. Uh, I'll go over that more later. So if you want to rotate a part, the classic way is to right click on it and do spin. And then you can do this. Um, if you want to use the shortcut R, you kind of have to, you can't just click R. You kind of have to get in the move mode. So you either start dragging it, if you can get it to move, sometimes it won't even do that. But you can hit M to get in the move mode, and then you can hit R, and that'll switch to the rotating mode. And then when you're done, you have to hit either right click, well, it's right where it was before, but you have to hit like spacebar or F6 or select done to tell it you're done. So let's just arrange all the parts. So now let's arrange the text. The text you move the same way, so you click and you hold and you drag. You'll notice there's a few different layers on some of these parts. Like this guy's got three. This banana over here, because that's a custom one I made, it just has the silk screen. So that's um, just one. For these three, if you click on it and you put the mouse over it for a second, you can see it pop up, silk screen top. So that's the one we want is the silk screen. So these other two, display and assembly top, we don't really need those. So if you click on that and you hit the 
delete key from the shortcuts we added in the previous video. Uh, or you can right click on it and do delete. And just keep the silk screen. We'll do the same with the rest of these. Now we'll save it with Control S. And yes, we want to overwrite it. Now we want to change all of the text so it's the same size. For some reason, it'll end up with uh, some of them really tiny and some of them large. So to do that, we select everything and right click text, change text block to, and do like a number four here. So now all the text is the same size. The text is still super thin though, so if you zoom in, you can see it has a zero thickness. So to fix that, we go Setup, Design Parameters, and this Text tab here. And then click on these three dots. And we have Photo Width right here. So these are all zero. So you want to make them something like five. So you can just do control V down the line or just click on them all and hit five. And okay. Now you can see they've got a thickness to them of five mils. Next, let's define the outside of our board and our keep in area. So we're gonna select this rectangle here and go over here to board geometry from this first drop down, And then the second one is design outline and we can click in this corner and click over here and that's going to be the board we can hit spacebar or um, f6 to make sure we're finished and the next one is going to be our keep out which is package keep in i guess so it's the keep in, not the keep out. And then we just, the only option is all. So we want to keep everything inside. Maybe like one step inside of here. And since this one's overlapping on this side, we can select this shape select tool and get this purple guy here. And then you can move each of the points in so that it's like that. And then complete. If we want, we can also adjust this grid to make finer adjustments by going set up grids and change this to something more like 25 mils instead of 100. That would allow us to move these points a little bit more in these corners so we're not wasting as much space. Now that we have the board set up, we can change our origin with setup, change origin, and maybe put that at the bottom left here, for example. And just click. And if you want to get it exactly in the middle of like a pin when you're placing the origin, you can right click and go snap to pin uh, while you're placing it. It also looks like we've got this point here a little bit off. Next, let's set up our board constraints. So go to setup and constraints. So I'll just leave these default, but I just want to show you. Got some electrical stuff physical. Um, the main one I use is the spacing. So here you can change these and that affects like the copper pores, which we'll go over later. So now let's add the traces. To do that, you use this connect tool up here. So then you just click on these pins and you'll notice over here you've got some settings. So we're on the top. You can see it's laying green. The bottom would be yellow. And it's five mils wide, so that's pretty small. I'm going to click in here and type 
15, hit enter. So now it's a bigger trace. You just click on one and click on the other one. And then you can route in between. You want to go up like this and try and match your 45s. You want nice 45s on everything. So also, if you hit escape and get out of the trace mode, there's um, one thing you can do is select the pin. This is a trick I use a lot. If you select a pin first and then hit the trace tool here, the connect tool, then it will um, automatically start it exactly on the pin. So that's... In this case, it doesn't really matter, but sometimes you end up with pins that are in between where your grid snapping is. So that's the way you get them lined up perfectly. And to add a via, you double click. So see, now we're on the next layer here. It's yellow. And we can click again here. You want to double click to go back. And then you can also right click and there's an add via button here but there's also change layer so you can change back to the bottom you've still got a via and then while you're doing all the stuff you can do oops cancel or done so oops just takes you back like one layer cancel starts you back at the beginning then you have to remember to hit done to finish it so if we just go back to here can double click and finish that connection. Now, whoop, see I forgot to finish it. <laughs> so we can go like this. And then done. There we go. Now it's done. The other tool that's cool is this slide right here. And that helps you <laughs> slide a bunch of stuff. That helps you just click on one thing and you can move that line back and forth like this. So if you want to undo a trace, you can hit delete and it'll get rid of just the one part. But if you want to get rid of the whole trace, you can select part of it and right click and then do nets and rip up etch and that will unroute the whole net now another little note is if you go to export and reports or you can do quick reports now let's do regular reports then you can scroll down to the bottom and there is an unconnected pin report so we can generate that yep, you gotta double click it and generate that and it says here, one unconnected pin. So it says from U1, pin 7, to B1, pin 1. So that's this one. Also remember in the other video we made a shortcut T for the trace tool. One common thing is to make a ground plane. So in this circuit, Pin 4 and this banana here is our ground. So do that, you can get the shape here. And we could make the plane on the bottom or the top. So let's change it to the top. And then we can uh, check out the pour and have it pour around all this other stuff. So we have dynamic copper and we can drag it out here so it covers a lot of the board. And you can see here it automatically puts these spacings around everything. So it keeps it unconnected. And you see it's not even connected here to the ground. So to change that, we have to select it. So we get this shape select tool. And we need to change the net. So click these three dots and we want it to be this 01455 
net. Now you can see it added in here, these little thermal reliefs, and it's now connected. Here there's no spaces around this trace, so this is all just one. So I guess we just want to delete these traces by clicking on them and hitting the delete key. So to make these spacings a little bit bigger between these traces, we can go back to setup constraints and in spacings, all layers can do just all here. We can change this from five to like 15. Okay on that. Now you'll see everything disappears. So you have to go back to this shape select tool and select the shape and then right click and go down to update shape. Now see it came back and it's got bigger spacings around the pins. So to make them bigger around the traces as well, we can go back to the constraints. And I think that one's in this nets here. So we can make all of these guys. Oh, host app application is busy. So to go back here and we have to press escape to unselect the nets. Constraints. So back to nets here. And let's see, so we can make this one 15. And double click it, control C, control V, control V, control V. We can do that. Oh, I just want to put it on these two. Make everything 15 All right, and close it. Now S to select the shape and right click, update shape. Okay, now we have a 15 mil space around the trace and the pin. Escape, up. Oh. Yes, again, update shape, space bar to finish. Now, if we want to adjust the size of these thermal reliefs, we can go shape, global dynamic parameters, and then go to this thermal relief connect tab. And then you can oversize it or do a fixed width so like we could do 15 and they've got a bunch of other settings here for like how many spokes you want and that kind of stuff you want uh larger and more spokes for more current uh, but you want smaller and fewer spokes to make it easier to solder and get a good solder connection so it doesn't wick out the heat so it's a bit of a balance we click ok now you can see these got larger here. Now they match uh, the other traces at 15 mils. This guy over here. So now if you want to edit the corner of these shapes, like say you want to put a, a hole here for a screw or something, you have a mounting bracket, you can use this shape edit boundary tool here. And then you can just start drawing on the edge of the shape. Select this shape and then you can draw like this, for example, over here, boom, and now it gets rid of it. You can just keep drawing if you want to do softer corners. You can do that on all the corners. Another thing you can do with shapes is you can create another shape on the same um, layer here I mean the same net and you can have them next to each other or overlapping then you can go to shape and merge shapes and if you select two that are next to each other then it turns them into one shape so that's an easy way if you want to draw a large piece of copper between merging the shapes and then using this little tool here to edit the boundaries. You can get them all in line pretty quick. And then of course you can do the select shape here and that lets you change all the vertices of the shape. And also move all the edges like this by grabbing them. And you can also hold down control and click along the lines to add another vertex if you want. 
So like, you have to do it before you click. So now I've grabbed this, um, undo. So S to select the shape and then control and click. You can only add one at a time. And space bar to yeah, complete the move. And now I'm gonna do a quick uh, note on how to uh, make a group. So if you have multiple sections of the same thing, you can uh, select all this stuff and save it. And then you can load it back. So you only have to route one section of it. You don't have to route multiple sections if they're the same. So to create the group, it's this little process here. Uh, first, you want to change the application mode to the placement edit mode by clicking this button here and then select all the stuff and then right click on the now that the stuff selected that you want to group and do place replicate create now this first mode here it doesn't really say anything well i guess it does so it says in the um, command window here select deselect additional etch as needed and click done so we don't have anything else you could click other traces and stuff we're gonna right click and do done now it says pick origin or use right mouse button for snap to so we're gonna use the right mouse button so we'll use this pin if you right click on this pin you can do snap to pin so that put the origin on that pin and now we're in our project here it's saying what do you want to call this group it's an mdd file so we're just going to call it group one save so that's it now we have this file in our project here see if we can find it group one dot mdd so now we can unroute all this stuff and we can try and place it maybe instead of unrouting we can just go back here and we'll just copy and paste the whole circuit <laughs> just put it over itself for now there and then we can forward these changes to the board now that we're over here we can do place component manually and all these guys are here again so we'll hide We'll just place them over here. So now that they're all placed, we can hit done, select everything, make sure we're still in this placement edit mode, right click on it, and do place replicate apply. And you could browse for it, but it's already got it saved because we just made it. So you just hit group one and boom. Now we got this thing already pre-made. So you can place it here. And hit done. So now we have two copies of the same thing. So next we'll get into just a few troubleshooting tips and wrap it up here. One thing I want to stress is this application mode thing. You definitely want to make sure that you're in the right mode for what you're trying to do. And a lot of times you just got to get back to this general edit mode. So if you're in some other mode and you're trying to do stuff and it's not working, that's probably the problem. The other thing is this find menu down here. So you can check and uncheck these boxes to allow you to, to select different things. So if you're having trouble getting a certain thing selected, then check and uncheck these so that you're not accidentally selecting the net if you're trying to... Um, select the symbol for example so anyway here's just some closing troubleshooting notes and tips just really make sure you got the application mode right and you can double check that you've got the right boxes checked in the find menu um, if they're unchecked you might not be able to select the items you want thanks for watching remember to subscribe and i'll see you next time